We continue now at the top of Daf Nun Hayam and Bezim Maseches Gitten. This is Gitten Daf 55b. And the previous summit, the Mishnah said that when you have a carbon chatus, if it was stolen, and the public is not aware that it was stolen and it's brought on the Mizbeach, so we say in such a situation it is Mechaperis, it does create an atonement. And Rabbi Yehuda says really on a Doraisa level, whether it was known or whether it was unknown, it would actually create an atonement. It would be mechaper. Umatam amr. But what was the reason why the Rabbanon said no da ena mechaperes that if it's known that it was stolen that it's not a kapara shelo yomru mizbeach ochel gazelus. That way people shouldn't say the mizbeach is consume is consuming stolen carbonus. Rashi says umatam amru no da ena mechaperes. Why did they say no da is not mechaper? The katani masnis and shelo no da mechaperes. Because what does it say in the Mishnah? It says that if they're not aware that what they're bringing is a carbon that was stolen. In other words, the gazlan brings this. Carbon Carbon to the base of Mikdash and the Kohanim bring it as a carbon, and they're not aware. Mechaperis then it creates an atonement. Hanoda, it sounds like if it's known, ain't a mechaperis. It's not going to have an, It's not going to be an atonement. Kolomer ain't a krava, meaning to say it's not going to be brought as a carbon. And so, what is the reason for that? And again, the reason for that is we don't want to bring such a carbon if everyone is aware that this is stolen. People are going to come to say the mizbeach is taking stolen stolen carbonus that we don't want. And the Gemara now says bishlama leula. Now I understand according to Ula. Now Ula says the opposite of Rabbi. Rev Yehuda. Ula says that on a Daraisa level, really, it is not a Kapora, and it's uh, it's because of Tikkun HaMizbeach, as they said in the previous summit, we don't want the Kohanim to be upset, that if it's low node, if they weren't aware of it, so then we say it's Mecha Peres. So I understand, according to Ula, Hainu Dekatani Chatas, that's why it says Chatas, and Rashi says, Hainu Dekatani Chatas, Tiika Chiglas Kohanim. When it comes to the carbon chatas, the kohanim eat from that carbon, and so therefore the whole reason is because the kohanim are upset. That's why the Mishnah specifically chooses an example of chatas. El Rav Yehuda, but according to Rav Yehuda, where the issue is that really it should be a kapara, and it's only not a kapara when people are aware of it, because we don't want people to say that the mizbeach is ochel gazelos. So ma'ir yachatos, why do you, why does the mission have to deal with the case of a carbon chatos? Afilo ola nami, even a carbon ola also, it's the same issue. People are going to say that the mizbeach is ochel gazelos, and so you shouldn't be able to bring this carbon ola. And the Gemara says, Lomi boy kamar, what the Mishnah is, the Mishnah is structured as not only this, but even that. Meaning, Lomi boy ola, we don't even need to tell you ola. Ola is obvious, the Kalali, because that entirely goes in the Mizbeach. And there, there's certainly a concern that people will say, Mizbeach ochel gazelos. Ela afilu chatas nami, but even the carbon chatas also. The chayla vidam hu desalak legavim Mizbeach, where the only thing going on in the Mizbeach is the chayla and the dam, that's the fats and the blood. Ve'idach kohanim achlile, and the rest of it is eaten by the kohanim. Afilu hachi gazer, nevertheless, Nevertheless, they make a gezeira, shalom yomru mizbeach ochel gezeilas. The people shouldn't say the mizbeach is consuming stolen carbonus. And the Gemara continues, Tanan, we learned the Shana al Khatas Hagazula Shalo no Dalarabim. It said that if you have a carbon chatas that's stolen and the public is not aware that it's stolen, Shahima Khaperis, that is going to be a kaparam in the Tikun Hamizbeach because of Tikun Hamizbeach. And so the Gemara says, Bishlom Ula, I understand according to Ula, because according to Ula, really on a Doraisa level it's not a kapara. And because of Tikun Hamizbeach, when it's low no Dalarabim, so then we say that it is Mechaperis Nicha, so that fits with the wording of the Mishnah. El Rav Yehuda, but according to Rav Yehuda, that really on a Doraisa level it is Mechaperis, and the Takana is that it's not Mechaperis when it's Noda, so Ibchami Baile, so the Mishnah should say the opposite. The Mishnah should talk about a Noda Laravim that's not Mechaperis because of a Takana. And the Gemara says, Hachinami Kamar, that's actually what the Mishnah means to say. Lo Noda Mechaperis. The Mishnah is saying, if it's not known, then it is an atonement. And Noda ain't a Mechaperis, and therefore we understand that to mean that if it is known, it is not a Kapara, it's like an inference that we make, and why is that? Again, that is because of Tikkun Hamizbech, we don't want it that people should say that the Mizbeach is consuming stolen carbonus. And the Gemara continues, Mesiv Rava, Rava asks a question from the following Mishnah. This is a Mishnah in Baba Kama. Gonav v'hikdash v'yachrakach tovech u'machar. Let's say a person stole, and then he sanctified the animal that he stole. He designated it as a carbon, and then he shechted the animal, or he sold the animal. Meshalen tashlom kefil. So he does pay the payment of kefil, that double payment that a ganav pays. Ve'enu meshalen tashlom yarba v'chamisha. But he doesn't have to pay the four or five times the amount for shechting or selling the animal. And the reason for that is that, is that the payment of four or five times the amount does not apply to hektish. At the time he stole the animal, it wasn't hektish, so he pays the kefil. But at the time he's doing the tvicha or the mechira, so then already it's hektish, and the, the payment of Arba Chamisha does not apply. Betani Alon, we learned and was taught on that, on that Mishnah, Bachutz ki if he would shech that animal outside of the Beis HaMikdosh, Anush Kares, he would actually be punished with Kares, meaning to say this is considered a full-fledged carbon that could be brought, that can be brought on the Mizbeach, and that's why if he shechts it outside of the Beis HaMikdosh, he's going to receive Kares. 
And so the Gemara says, Now, if you're going to say that Yish alone, through Yish alone, he does not acquire, meaning on a Doraisa level, he never really acquires this animal. So then how could we say, How could he be getting Karis over here? We're saying that he's able to be Makdash, the animal, to the extent that it can, in theory, be brought on the Mizbeach, and that's why he would get Karis. But that's not true. If we're saying Yish Kedil Lokani, that was the whole point. We're saying that on a Doraisa level, you can't really bring this to the Mizbeach. So there shouldn't be Karis. And the Gemara says, Amar Rav Shizvi, Rav Shizvi says, Kares midivrayim. What we mean to say is, you get Kares midrabonan. The Gemara says, Achichola, they laughed at this. Kares midivrayim mi, because there's such a thing as Kares midrabonan. Amar Luhu Rava, Rava said to them, Gavra, Rabba, Amar Mils, a great person said something. Lo tachochola, don't laugh at it. Kares sha'al yidei divrayim basala. What it really means is, is that Kares through the Rabbonin comes to him. It's not that the Kares is the Rabbonin, it's that the Rabbonin do something which enables that he's going to get Kares over here. And what it means is as follows. Ukmua Rabbonin bereshusei. The Rabbonin say it is considered in his reshus, and therefore the hektish does take effect. Ki hechid in order that he can now be chayv. The Rabbonin can place it into his, his reshus. So now he'll be chayv Kares if he shechts it outside the Beis HaMikdash because it's shechting a Karb outside of the Beis HaMikdash. And the Gemara says, Oh my Rav, Rav says, Havadai kami boili, I certainly have the following question, Ki yukumu Rabbonin bereshusei mishas geneva or mishas hekdesha. When the Rabbonin put it into his possession, is that happening at the moment he steals it or is that happening at the moment that he's makdash it? The Gemara says, Lamay nafkamina, what difference does it make? Legizo se, valdo se, let's say it's shearings, let's say it has children, meaning there's something that comes from the animal, some kind of shevach, some kind of gain. Is he going to, the, to be the owner and receive that gain, meaning the thief? And the Gemara says, "My, what is the halacha again? If it's in his Rishus Mishas Ganevi, he's going to get that benefit." Hadra Marava, but then Rava said, "Mistavra makes sense to say Mishas Hekdesha that it's only in his Rishus from the time of the Hekdesh Shelo Yehechote Niskar. That way, the sinner should not profit. If it was in his Rishus already from the time of the Ganeva, he would profit. So that cannot be the case." And Rashi explains, Mishalim Tashlum Ekefal, again, he does make the double payment that happens by Geneva, Dikeshagon Vachulin Havai, because at the time that he stole it, it was Chulin, it was not Hektish. Ve'enu Mishalim Tashlum Yarboa Vechamisha, but he doesn't pay the payment of five or the four or five times the amount. Dikhita Vachumachar, because when he slaughtered it or sold it, Hektish Havai, at that point it was already Hektish. Ve'en Tashlum Ekefal, Vetashlum Yarboa Vechamisha, no Hagen Behektish, these payments of Kefal and Arboa Vechamisha don't apply to Hektish, Kedi Alfinan Behazov, that we learn in Baba Mitzia. Bachutz, and if Ishachat Bachutz, if Ishachat it outside of the Mikdosh, Anish Kares, he's going to receive the punishment of Kares. And so the Gemara said, Kares Mayavidita, why should he get Kares over here? Meaning, the Bishlomalinian Tashlomi Arbava Chamisha lo Kashalan. In terms of the fact that he is exempt from paying four or five times the amount, meaning it's considered hectish, and in that regard, that's not difficult. The equal member, because we can always say, that when we say that Yish alone is not a Kenyan, that just means it's not a Kenyan in terms of bringing it on the Mizbeach. You can't bring it on the Mizbeach. But we're not saying that in terms of Hektish. It does have a status of Hektish, and we would say there is no four or five times the amount. That we could explain. Elokaris, but if you're already saying that it's hektish to the extent that you get kares if you shecht it outside the mikdash, imi doraisa lo chazi lakrav. If on a doraisa level you can't bring this as a carbon, hakayim alon haroy lepesach on moed chayav and olav bachutz midi achrin alo. We know that the halacha is only if you can actually bring it to the old moed. Only if you can actually bring it as a carbon is there a chiv if you shecht it outside the base on mikdash. Otherwise, there is not. The fact that we're saying this goes so far as to say that you're chayav kares, it seems to indicate that yish kedi is in fact. Kona. And so Rashi continues that the Gemara answers on behalf of Ula, Kares Sha'al Yidei Divrei and Basala. What it really means over here is really Yish Kedi is not Kona. But here he gets Kares through the Rabbonin. Kares Do Raisa. It's going to be a Kares Do Raisa that happens through the actions of the Rabbonin. Kedem Farish Vyazal, as the Gemara explains. And again, as the Gemara said, Akumur Rabbonin Bershos Ganev, Im Hikdisha, Sheyachalaleh Hekdash Kamar. The Rabbonin say it is in the Rishos Ganev that if he should make it Hekdash, it's going to be considered full Hekdash. Vishi Yishayev Kares Im Yishchatena Bachutz. And he will be Chayev Kares if he shechs it outside of the Mikdash. Kihechi Dokmur Bershus Elinian Kapara. Just like the Rabbonin are able to put it into his Rishos in terms of Kapara, so too they're able to do that in terms of the Chiyav Kares. Uknasu de Kansu of Hefker Bezen Hefker Uvikitsha. This is considered a Knas. It's a fine of the Rabbanon and Hefker Bezen Hefker. They do have the ability to transfer ownership. 
and they can declare something ownerless, the kitchen, and therefore it is considered to be hectish, and that's why he receives he receives karis. And then the Gemara said, at what point in time do they put it in his rishos? And that makes a difference, in terms of its shearings, and, and if it has children. Because again, let's say there was some kind of gain before he made it hectish. So if it was in, in his rishos from the time he stole it, then he gets those shearings. He's only going to pay the value of a cow that was going, that was able to give birth. He doesn't have to pay for the cow and the child, that the child actually belongs to him. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, There was no Sikrikon, that refers to the Sakari in Yehuda, during the times that people were killed in the wars, Rashi will explain. But after the time that people were being killed in the wars, Yeshba Sikrikon, then the law of the Sakari did apply. Rashi says, Lohaya Sikrikon be Yehuda Sikrikon Ovid Kochavim Rotseach. Sikrikon refers to the idol worshippers that were murderers. Shenosin Lo Yisrael Karka Bepidio Nafsha. The Jews would give the Sikrikon land as a redemption for his soul, meaning essentially that they were extorted, they were threatened, and the Jews had to give them their land. Viomar Lo saw Karka Zuvi Altami Sene. The Jew would say to the Sikrikon, Take this land and don't kill me. Baharuge Melchama means Melchemes Titus Shaisa Birushalayim of Yehuda. That refers to the war of Titus that was in Yerushalayim and Yehuda. So it means to say that Baharuge Melchama, the law of the Sikrikon, did not apply. The Gemara will ask, what exactly are we saying over here? But in any case, that's what it means to say, Baharuge Melchama, during the time of this war, there was no Sikrikon after the time of the war, so then there was Sikrikon. And the Mishnah now continues. Kate said, how so? Let's say a person buys a property from the Sikrikon, and then he goes ahead and he buys it from the original owner. So Mecho bottle, that's not considered to be a good purchase. That's considered to be nullified. And Rashi explains Mecho bottle da Amrinan Miyira Avad. If he first buys it from the Sikrikon, and then he goes to the Balabais and buy it and buys it, so maybe the Balabais is just selling it because he's afraid. He, he doesn't want to go against what the Sikrikon did. Inami or Hasheni Noach Liva Rishon Kashahimanu, that first owner, the original owner figure. I'd rather transfer away from the Sikrikon to this other guy, and then I'll take the other guy to court. So he doesn't really mean to give it to the other guy. The Gemara is going to establish that the case is talking about where there was no shtar. That's if he buys it from the Sikrikon first and then buys it from the original owner. Now, if the person goes to the Balabais first, the Chazar Velokach Mi Sikrikon, and then he goes ahead and buys it from the Sikrikon, Mechokayim, that is considered a good purchase. And along the same lines, Lokach Mino Ish, the Chazar Velokach Mino Isha. If he buys first from the husband his rights to the field, and then he buys from the wife her rights to that same field, Mechobatl, that sale is nullified, meaning the wife might only be doing it because she's pressured to do it because already the husband did it. But Minoisha, but if he first buys it from the wife, the Chazar Velokach Minoisha, and then he buys the, the husband's rights from him, Mechokayim. So that sale is considered to be a good sale. And Rashi explains, Lokach Mino Ish, Karkaham Yuchedes Luxuba Sishto. We're talking about land that's designated for the Ksuba. Or it's written into the ksuba, or it was evaluated, the value of that land was written into the, into the ksuba. And certainly this would apply to other property. of delay. The point over here is as follows: If she doesn't agree to the sale, So then it's going to look like the husband's going to say, "Oh, you're looking forward to a divorce. You're looking forward to me dying. You want to get the land. The reason why you're not selling your rights to the land is because you want to get this land after a divorce or my." death, that's what the Gemara explains in Baba Basra, so the point is again, we don't really trust that the woman really wants to sell her rights to the field, she can say, I was just doing it to please my husband, I wasn't really interested in selling it, that's why if he first buys from the husband and then the wife, it is not going to be a sale, but the other way around is going to be a sale. And the Mishnah continues, Zu Mishnah Rishona, all of this was the original Mishnah, so to speak, the original ruling of the sages. But Bezdin shall achareyem amru, but the later Bezdin, the later court said as follows, Halokeach misikrikon, anybody who purchases from the Sakari, no sen labaylim revia, he has to give a quarter to the original owners. Rashi says, no sen, no sen labaylim revia, shashiro, the sikrikon mozel gabe riva, because we understand the measurement, we have an estimation, that the sikrikon, they lower it by a quarter. And the Gemara continues, Amos, when is that the case? Bizman she'in biyad likach. That's if they're not able to purchase. Aval yesh biyad likach. But if the original owners are able to buy it from the Sikrikon, yesh biyad likach, heim kodem l'chol adam. The original owner actually comes first. Somebody else can't go and buy the property if the original owner is able to buy it back. Rebbe Hoshe Bezin Vinimnu. Then Rebbe, he established a Bezin, and they 
voted as follows, they established as follows, that if the property has been in the possession of the Sikrikon for 12 months, so then anyone who comes first to buy is able to buy. Anyone has the opportunity. Again, but you do have to give to the, to the owners one quarter of the value. And the Gemara says, If during the time of war, there were none of these uh, Sakari, these extortionists. So after the times of war, after people are being killed, and then suddenly there are extortionists, that seems to be backwards. And so the Gemara explained, as we as we alluded to in the Mishnah, Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda says, Lo danu ba din sikrikon kamer. It doesn't mean that there were no extortionists. It, mean that, it means that the law of the extortionists does not apply after the times of the killings. The Amar Rav Yassi, because Rav Yassi says, Gimel gezerus gazer. There were three levels of gezerus, three stages of gezerus. Gezerta kamaisa, the first decree was, called lokata liktulu, anyone who doesn't kill a Jew should be put to death. And so therefore, there was a real concern. The Jews had a real concern that they would be killed. Mitziasa, the second decree was called the Kotel Lysi Arbazuz. Anyone who kills a Jew is fined for Zuz. Again, that's a small amount. There was a real concern, a real fear of death at that time. But Basraisa, but the last decree was the opposite. Called the Kotel Liktulu. Anyone who kills a Jew is going to be killed. At that time, the Jews were not under threat of being killed. And Hilgach, therefore, Kamaisa Mitziasa means during the earlier times, during the earlier Gezeras, that's the time of the Haruge Melchama, Kevan the Katli, so since the Jews were being killed, so so since the person was essentially being forced, he really did give up his land. The original owner at that point in time had no rights to the land. It's considered that he gave it up to the Sakari. But Basraisa, but during the latter time, meaning at the time of the last Gezer, when the Jews really were not being killed, Amri Ha'idn Alishko Lemachar Tavanale Bedina, the Jew would say, the original owner would say, right now I'll let him take it, tomorrow I'll take him to court. And that's why it was after that point in time meaning after the time of the Harugi Muhammad, that's when these laws of the Sikrikon applied, meaning these laws that allowed the original owner, uh, the original owner to possibly recoup his loss. And Rashi explains, Lo donu din sikrikon, the law of the Sikrikon did not apply when people were when people were being killed in the war, the Kani Lagamri, because there the Sakari is considered they totally acquire it. Someone bought from the Sakari, it was a good sale. But once that ended, once that, that threat ended, anyone who bought from him had to follow the Allah and the Mishnah. Again, the original owner had some rights at that time. The Yom Rabbi Yasi, Shalosh Gezer, Gazar, Titus, Papum, Shalom, because Rav Asi said there were three different decrees, three stages of decrees during the time of Titus' attack, called the Lokotel Yisrael, Kalecha, Damashkech, Lelik, Tulu, at first, anyone who didn't kill a Jew when they found him, that person could be killed. Therefore, at that point of time, and at that point in time, if someone was forced to give up the land, and he t- said, take this land and let me go, we assume that was a full Kenyan. We've established in Baba Basra that if someone is forced to sell, it's considered a sale. And again, after that point in time, when there is no threat, so then we say that the original owner does have some rights. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Some of Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, "My What does it mean when it's written in the pasuk? Ashrei Adam Afachet Tamid. Fortunate is the person who's always worried, who's always afraid, doesn't want to do something wrong. Umak Shaliba, but the person who hardens his heart, Yibol Bara, he's going to fall into evil. And he explains as follows: Akamsu Bar Kamsa Charv Yerushalayim. It was because of the episode of Kamsa Bar Kamsa that Yerushalayim was destroyed. Atarnagol of Atarnagol, so because of the rooster and the hen Char of Tormalka, that's why the king's mountain was destroyed. Ashok and because of the shaft of the chariot, Char of Betar, that's why Betar was destroyed. And the Gemara elaborates Akamsa Bar Kamsa Char Yerushalayim on the episode of Kamsa Bar Kamsa. Yerushalayim was destroyed. There was an individual. His friend was Kamsa and his enemy was Bar Kamsa. Of it, Sudasa, he made a meal. Omar Leila Shame said to his attendant, Zil Aisi Li Kamsa, go bring me Kamsa, invite him to the party. Azal Aisi Le Bar Kamsa, he went and he mistakenly brought him Bar Kamsa. Asa Ashkeche Davi Yosef, he found Bar Kamsa was sitting there. Omar Leila said to him, Michdi Augavra Bal Devava Du Gavrahu, let us see, this person is the enemy of, of myself, of this person, meaning you're my enemy. My boy Sacha, what are you doing over here? Kum poke, get up, get out of here, you're not invited. Amar Lai said to him, Hoel Vasai, but since I've already come, Shavkon Vyavna Lach Dumei, Madochin Vishasina, let me stay, and I'll give you money, I'll pay you for that which I eat and that which I drink, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video. And Daf Nun Vav Ahmed Aleph.